In 2008, I started with symptoms of pulmonary hypertension with tachycardia, increased heart rate, 120, 130, gaining fluid five to eight to 10 pounds, shortness of breath, couldn't do stairs. Um, I'm also a physical therapist and I was getting shortness of breath working with my patients. You end up with a GI guy, a lung guy, maybe a kidney guy, and uh, uh, besides the rheumatologist, the pulmonologist, the cardiologist. At one point I had right and left cardiologist. Um, you end up with specialists for everything that you have because um, it's so complex that one doc really can't be expert on all of it. Scleroderma is one of the connective tissue diseases in the same family of lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. It's a disease that can affect many different parts of the body. Scleroderma means hard skin, and so that there is, uh, it can be hard skin as well as other tissues of the body, the hardness in the lungs or hardness in the heart, uh, affecting um, many different aspects of uh, the body. Overall, scleroderma affects prevalence somewhere around 200 per million population, and the frequency of pulmonary hypertension is anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of that population of patients. So it's really a very large number of scleroderma patients. African Americans are at greater risk for pulmonary hypertension in scleroderma. So there are some other, other subsets, but basically it's having had Raynaud's for a very long time and having this uh, low diffusing capacity that's put you at a sort of a unique subset. Now the symptoms that the patients have are pretty subtle because scleroderma patients have had this disease for a while and they've, they've adapted to their disease. So instead of uh, an, a patient that has never had any illness all of a sudden getting short of breath, this happens gradually. So oftentimes the scleroderma patient isn't even hardly aware that they're getting more short of breath. They, they've adapted their activities. So it's, it's really up to the uh, doctor to work hard to get that history from the patient. You can't just ask our patients, are you short of breath? And they'll say, oh no, I'm fine. I don't have any shortness of breath. And yet, can you climb two flights of stairs without stopping? Can you carry your groceries? Are you doing the same types of activities that you were able to do six months or a year ago? Uh, have things really changed at all? And those are the kinds of questions that we really have to focus because our, our patients aren't going to volunteer uh, that they're short of breath or they can't do anything more because they, they, they change their activity levels to ad adapt to it because they want to continue functioning as long as they can. If you come into the PHA chat room almost any night, there will be one or two of us in there who have scleroderma or lupus or Sjogren's or um, um, rheumatoid arthritis. We're all in there and we're all chatting up and, and we learn from each other and it also provides a place for those of us who can't go out to socialize anymore that we still have our online pals that we can go chat with if we like. My life has changed so much and it's definitely not where I thought it was going to be. I mean, I spent seven years training to be a physical therapist, and it's like, oh, I can't do that. What am I going to do now? But it, I just kind of learned to redefine my happiness and kind of look at what the illness has taught me and to keep going from, from there. Scleroderma and pH is not my identity. I'm still a person inside. And doing things that you can do so you don't feel sick. If the sickness becomes your identity, then you don't have a shot. You have to surround your people that does not make you feel sick. I may not be able to do this today, but I'm not going to say I can anymore. Maybe not today, but I can tomorrow, and I'm going to find something that I can do.